leave it to the Toronto Maple Leafs media to make everything about themselves. We've made a few videos already talking about Tampa Bay Lightning captain Steven Stamkos and the idea that he may be on his way out. Not because he doesn't want to be in Tampa, quite the contrary actually. He really wants to stay in Tampa, but because of how the Lightning themselves have conducted this contract extension process. Just in case you need the refresher, Stamkos is on the last year of his deal. At the time of recording this audio, he does not have a contract extension, and he had expressed at the start of training camp how disappointing it was that he did not have that extension. He told everybody, yeah, I wanted it. I wanted the extension back at the start of the summer. I told the Lightning I wanted to get things done before training camp, so I'm very disappointed at the lack of talks. Now, that is a pretty alarming piece of news, especially when you acknowledge the response given out by Julian Brisebois, Tampa Bay Lightning GM, as to why they did not give him that extension yet. Pretty much, they want to make sure that re-signing Steven Stamkos, who will be, what is it, 34 at the end of his deal, they want to make sure that re-signing this guy to a deal that he would be accepting of doesn't completely hinder their long-term plans. They need to see what their team is going to be like, who is sticking around, and what the team situation entails heading into next season, which is kind of why they did not get this contract extension done. It's a fair excuse, especially for a guy who is so old. But Stamkos is a good player. He is the captain of the team, arguably one of the best Lightning who have ever played the game, and... There's a level of disrespect that you're reaching by not giving the guy his wishes, so I can understand both sides here. You want to run a hockey team, Julian Brisebois, but Stamkos at the same time is the captain of your two-time Stanley Cup winning franchise, and of course he played as well in the finals in 2016. So even though he is technically coming off of two of the best seasons in his career, the Lightning have not committed that money in the ways that he wanted to. Now, who knows by the time this video is uploaded, if that's changed, if there is a contract handed out, then maybe things are different. I'm recording this video a few days in advance, but what I wanted to talk about was this idea brought up in the Toronto Star. This was written by Kevin McGron on Tuesday, September 26th, so a little while ago. Take a look at this piece, 13 Musings. Maple Leafs, John Tavares should keep an eye on the Stam Coast negotiations. The talks in Tampa could provide a lesson on what to do and what not to do with a veteran leader. Link is going to be in the description if you want to go ahead and read this article, but you do need the subscription to the Star to fully access it, so if you have it, great, link is in the description, you can read this article. I'll also leave a link in the description to Spectre's Hockey from September 28th, because what Lyle Richardson does is he summarizes what is written about here in the Star, Kevin McGrann wonders if contract extension talks between the Maple Leafs and Captain John Tavares will pan out in the same way as the Stamkos situation has in Tampa. Stamkos, 33, raised eyebrows last week when he voiced his disappointment to reporters over the lack of contract extension discussions with the Lightning management this summer. Bolts GM Julian Breesbaugh said that his captain will have to wait until the end of the season for those negotiations to begin. McGron wonders if Leafs GM Brad Trilliving will ask Tavares, who will be 34 next summer, to take a pay cut like Malkin did with the Penguins last summer. Malkin's pay dropped from an AAV of 9.5 mil to 6.1 mil. McGron also mused over whether or not Trilliving might have other ideas. Here is Spectre's note on the idea here. Tavares is earning an AAV of $11 million on his current deal, which expires at the end of 24-25. He'll have no choice but to accept a pay cut if he hopes to continue playing for the Leafs, especially if his production declines between now and then. That's assuming management intends to keep him once his contract is completed, and how big a cut will depend on his performance over the next two seasons. And here's the thing. John Tavares is 33 years old, he has all the awards you could ask for, and he is making a significantly good amount of money. $11 million is not cheap, and in fact, you could say that this was a bit of a bargain compared to what he could have gotten. If you remember back in the 20, what was it, 20... 18 offseason when he left the Islanders, there were a few teams, San Jose particularly, that were offering Tavares more money than Connor McDavid was making at the time. 13 mil. Tavares then took the pay cut, he took a $2 million decrease in order to play for the Toronto Maple Leafs, wherein he has been a pretty good player, I mean, he's been point per game the entire time he's been with the Leafs, but 
as he has gotten older, you could start to see the foot speed diminishing a little bit. He was never really the fastest guy to begin with, but lately it's been more of an issue that has noted itself in Tavares' game. And so you have the conversations going about saying, hey, if Tavares let's say, moves to the wing, how much does that diminish his dollar amount AAV value by? Because we know he's a good two-way capable player, but if he just can't keep up with the pace that a center position demands at the NHL level, then what exactly do you do? With this in mind, though, of course, a Toronto Maple Leafs, if you wanted to keep this core together, you need to get that Nylander contract signed. You'll probably try to re-sign Marner. You'll probably try to re-sign Tavares. Johnny T might be the guy that needs to take the biggest pay cut out of everybody in order to make this work. And it's not because he's a bad player, it's just circumstantially, I mean, it's tough to realistically commit a whole bunch of term and a whole bunch of dollars to a guy who is going to be 34 by the time this contract expires. By the time his next contract begins, Tavares will be 35. And who knows if he's 35 years old, if he'll still be a point-per-game caliber player. Now, we know that superstar players in the NHL normally can keep up. They normally proceed with equal amounts of points, and they rarely decline super suddenly. But you can't guarantee any of that it's tough to really say so. There's a world out there where Tavares is 35 and still getting 80 points in 80 games. That's totally realistic. But there also is a world where his foot speed catches up to him, where he's not able to produce as much, and he ends off the year with 60, 55 points in an 82-game season. Both are possible, both are plausible, but you can't go out there and commit a significant amount of money in dollar amounts when you can't guarantee what you're going to get. So for Johnny T, if he takes the Malkin-like discount of going from, let's say, 9.5 to 6 million-ish, let's say Tavares goes from 11 to, I don't know, 6.5 or 7, then, hey, good on Johnny T for taking the discount and biting the bullet here. We know this is the team that he wants to play for. We know this is the team he grew up cheering for. You know, the pajamas and the blankets when he was a kid and everything, right? The rational hockey fan in me says that John Tavares is also a hockey fan, and if there's an opportunity for him to stick around with the Maple Leafs and keep that relationship going, there's probably more ways than one that that can occur. And not every one of them involves Tavares making an extremely high dollar amount or being signed on for a really long time. We just saw Mikhail Backlund on the Calgary Flames get a $4.5 million extension with two years as the length there. Is that something similar that the Maple Leafs could look at with Tavares? Shorter term deals, lower money deals, so that by the time Tavares is 37 or 38, you don't have a guy who's super old clogging up dollars on your team that might not be all too worth it at that time. This is the entire conundrum that the Lightning are facing with Stamkos because Stamkos is not Mikhail Backlund. The guy is much better and he produces more points. So projecting that decline, projecting how long he's going to be able to be good, and saying, okay, well, we can't give you eight million or eight and a half or any sort of a pay raise. Like, it's not realistic to look at it in a lens like that. Just giving money out for guys' performances from the now, because you can't predict how players play when they're 36, 37 years old. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel this Steven Stamkos situation impacts the John Tavares Toronto Maple Leafs relations? Do you think this needs to be some sort of a red flag or a warning sign for the John AT extension next year? Or do you think the Maple Leafs are not going to have too much of an issue with re-signing John Tavares as long as he's able to play on the wing, as long as he's able to take that pay cut? Do you think it's more likely that he just bites the bullet and does that rather than having this entire Steven Stamkos thing happen again? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below if you're a Maple Leafs fan. What do you think about Johnny T and his contract situation next year? I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99. And bye.